to see it all in action. Um, are you good? Are you filming? Yeah, I'm just going to keep rolling oh, and then why are you, why are you yeah, even if you're not ready, you're ready. Um, it's all I, cool. I think, you know, I mean, for us, I don't know if you're aware, we have something called our learning philosophy, um, which is what makes Activate Learning as an organisation distinctive. Okay. Um, and uh, it's a philosophy that is all around emotion, motivation and how the brain works. So in that context, uh, the stories that you told about your own life um, and the way in which you um, encourage the students to, to have high aspirations and to really believe that actually high aspirations is one of the ways that you can uh, it's one of the ways that you can increase your chances of succeeding you know, but to actually help them really believe that through real examples and things that you've been through and successes that you've had off the back of failure and the kind of you know talking to the importance of resilience and, and being able to to build on platforms um, you know towards a goal uh, I think that it fits absolutely with our learning philosophy um, because you know uh, the, the motivational side, I mean people who are highly motivated, they learn yeah. and they learn far more effectively. Um, so having people who, who, who come in who are independently successful, um, who have had difficult times and have built on those is brilliant um, and that really came across, you know, I mean, obviously you're a very natural speaker and um, you know, it's uh, it was. I found it particularly interesting. I did, um, and I'm sure there's a reason for it. That, that the the sort of as Leanne asked you during the session, what was your tipping point? Yeah. What was it that shone a light and changed your direction? And it was interesting just to reflect on your um, on your uh, uh, talk that actually you didn't naturally give away what were the hardships and what mm. were the tipping points for you. And it took for somebody really to ask the question. Yeah. Yeah. Um, before you spoke very openly about those, and in fact, I think that's some of the most impactful stuff. Because okay, that's okay, the real I mean, authenticity yeah. coming out. Yeah. It's just like, you know, I mean, you so hit them hard, basically. Just well, I think it's really story, important. Yeah. I mean, you know, you alluded to to having had a number of different difficulties yeah. during your 16 to 18 period. That is not dissimilar um, yeah. for many young people. Um, and of course, in this day and age, I think that um, you know. There's a, a lot of people would agree that it's a lot more difficult these days mm. for 16 to 18 year olds. But I think that the idea of the opportunity, uh, the raging bull of opportunity. Do you like that idea of the raging bull? Yeah, I, I mean, I do, because there is opportunity yeah, everywhere. Yeah. And um, I think for, for many young people, it's oh, finding it's the confidence yeah. to grasp those. So, you know, I think what you bring um, in standing up and, and speaking so openly about how you've done that is that it gives an evidence point you know it gives them you know it, 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 it does work you can believe it yeah and that's why i think it's really powerful stuff yeah which is thank great you. Oh, thank you absolutely so where do you go from here then so well, well physically we're going to go back to cruise so yeah yeah i'll try one o'clock and i'll probably get about three ish mm -hmm. and then um got events tonight i've got a couple this week and yeah, I'm actually on. I'm going to be on TV on Wednesday, so yeah. Wow. It's a busy week. And how are you developing what you do? I mean, you obviously, in terms of in inspirational speaking, you're very good at it. But um, do you have a plan for how you'll broaden that, or, or yeah, where so do you want to go? Yeah, so one of my goals this year, I actually started at the end of last year, is that I want to put more content. So not just speaking at events, I still want to impact people away from events so I put a lot of stuff on YouTube now on Facebook so that's one thing I'm using to expand and to get bigger this year. And are you able, have you found a way in which you can measure, it's not a great word measure, I'm trying to think of a different way of putting it, but do, do you find a way of being able to assess what the impact is that you have on young people because it must be quite difficult you go and you do an inspirational yeah. talk I mean for some people that might not land for weeks. Yeah yeah it's true. Sometimes it's, yeah. even a year. Yeah, you know, it just, it just, just you. Yeah. Hit you. Yeah, do, you, do, do you get? How do you do that? How do you how do you come to understand for yourself that what you do has an impact? Yeah, so that that does happen sometimes. You feel like you know, do you have you reached them? Have you hit them? If it's online on social media, it's very easy in terms of the comments or the replies mm. you get back. So that can be easier. But if speaking at an event like today, is sometimes if I might get messages later on saying thank you, that really did help me. Whatever. So yeah. that was nice to you get. So I make sure I check my phone. Yeah, fantastic. Mm. Good, and I'm sure you will. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, good. Well, I'm really, really grateful. And um, I mean, interestingly, one of the things that I've been quite involved with over the years is something called Opportunities to Inspire. Yeah. Talking about the Raging Bull. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I founded Opportunities to Inspire in 2010. Well, it much. well it's an organisation now. It's been adopted by the Oxfordshire Local Enterprise Partnership as a, as a model for Oxfordshire, certainly. But um, it, it, it's all around getting people who have 
journey to speak about, um, uh, and certainly people who've had careers um, or in careers um, to come into schools and colleges and talk, you know, yeah. much as you've done about what their story is. What's it so called? What's it opportunities called? to inspire. Like that, yeah. I mean, it's one of a yeah. number. You know, you've got the careers and enterprise company yeah. that you might have come yeah, across, yeah, but it's a yeah. national body that's doing a similar sort of thing. Mm. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, I think it's it makes such a big difference to have externals coming in and spending time with students and telling their mm. stories. How long have you been here for? So on? I've been involved with Activate Learning now for a total of about seven years. I started actually as a business. My background is not in education. My background really? is in financial services. I'm an entrepreneur myself, yeah. um, and uh, for twenty plus years, I, I was working in financial services. And um, I started actually as an external doing uh, mentoring for some students at the City of Oxford College, those who were having a pretty tough time mm. and trying so to help from, them. So, so you grew up in South Africa, right? So when, I did. Did, you, so when did you come to... 1989. Okay. Yeah. I've, been, I've been a while then, yeah. No, it's been a while. I know, absolutely. I was born and brought up there until I was 14. Yeah. Um, and but you don't, say, know old, you, know, you don't know older than 30, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you're saying it's like... That's what you're saying it's like... Because I just realised you came over from South Africa before we was even born. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> and I mean, that is the power of oil of Ole. <laughs> you know, if you want to send any free ones through, yeah, you know where to send them. No, but I mean, on a, on, a, on a serious level, I was brought up in apartheid South Africa, yeah. obviously at a time when millions of people were marginalised from education, young people because they were black, and um, you know that for me, um, seeing that being brought up around that. Um, is where my passion for education actually comes from, the fact of seeing so many people marginalised. So I've always had a big passion for education, it just took me 20 years in financial services to get around to it. <laughs> um, so I've been involved with Activate, like I say, six or seven years, um, and I've been working for Activate now for just over a year. Sweet. So, uh, so there we are, previously it was on a voluntary basis, my way. You've done now paid a call. Yeah, that's right. Well, I've done a career switch, essentially. Yeah, yeah. Well, but yeah. my executive roles in financial services are now non-executive. Because yeah, when Liam read out your title, it was like a sentence. You know, your job, like the title. Yeah, yeah, that's right. It was, it was yeah. like yeah. group executive director for innovation and development. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And faculty executive yeah. director. You say it so quickly and smoothly, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would have been my time. Well, on my badge, it says innovation and development. Yeah. Clearly, they yeah. couldn't fit the full title. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But actually, Innovation and development is something which we encourage all of our staff and our students to be doing every day anyway. Um, so in some ways, having it on my, on my job title um, you know, is a reminder, I think, that I need to see everybody doing that. But my, the most important part of my job is making sure that our learners have got high aspirations, that our teaching and learning and assessment is of the highest quality and that we're always changing and always improving it. And it doesn't matter what my job title is or which of my hats I've got on, that's really, that's where the impact is. Yeah. And, you know, and the more we can let learners know about the success they can enjoy, the careers that they can have, um, and the more people that we bring, um, bring to, to see them, and the more often they go out and see people in business, yeah. then the more likely they are to feel motivated. Um, and motivation is not the only, uh, obviously, it's not the only facet of our learning philosophy, and it's not the, it's not the only um, driver, I think, for great learning. I mean, the emotional side of our learning philosophy is really important too, and you might have seen um, our new Prime Minister's first speech on health um, in the last uh, the last day or so. Yeah, I saw it. Did it, it go viral? Would it go viral? But a lot of people, I saw a lot of talk around. I haven't watched it yet. I'm sure there will be. I mean, your first slide um, in your talk today spoke to it. You know, is it too early in the term to have a mental breakdown? And Until the, in a year time, yeah. yeah. Have you seen people share it? It's crazy. Well, like, I'm not surprised. <laughs> is it too early in a year time? I'm not surprised. I mean, mental health yeah. in schools and in colleges yeah. is a major, major mm -hmm. concern, um, and the. Um, uh, the support for it is on a national level is, is woeful and um, it's something which affects a very large number of young people mm. um, and you know there is a lot that can be done to help sure. um, and you know I think that that's a very important part of the learning puzzle as well. If you don't feel safe mm. um, and if you don't feel in a supported environment 
doesn't matter how motivated you are, you know, that is going to affect your ability to learn. Yeah, environment's key. Yeah, environment's and, key. and uh, because I think you'll love it, I must finish the learning philosophy, the third piece, which is the brain, is just about understanding that, mm. you know, unless you have a mental disability, and of course there are, are people who do, and we mm. certainly um, uh, uh, work um, with, with people who do, but, um, you know, the brain is a muscle, and the more that you use it, uh, the more it develops and the stronger it gets. Yeah. And so, you know, bring, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And you heard one of our students today saying, you know, wow, man, you made it to university. Fantastic. You know, I couldn't even touch that. Yeah. And those were his words. Mm. Um, you know, and, um, and it's heartbreaking to hear anyone but say that. It's hard for you to hear that. Yeah, yeah really yeah. hard for me to hear that because, you know, I mean, mm. that's something which, you know, we spend so much of our time building relationships with learners and our students. Um, how, you know, in, encouraging them to have high aspirations to believe they can succeed. Mm -hmm. So that really, for me, was a real point in your in your um, time with our students, um, where I, where it was hard to hear it. Um, and you know, I mean, the, the the for many of our students, as this this um, student did say, you know, having failed his GCSEs. So we do. Uh, take students through their GCSE English and Maths if they failed that previously. Sometimes they've mm. failed two, three, four times, mm. and, and sometimes um, they've you know been led to believe it's because they can't succeed at it. Yeah. You know, it's not your thing, or you're just not clever enough. Mm. Um, and, and 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 this isn't true. Mm. Uh, it just isn't true because you know if you continue and you persist, you know you can succeed. Um, mm. And so it's about understanding that that's how the brain operates. And when you take those three pieces of our learning philosophy... So you know, what's your three philosophy for So it's emotion, emotion motivation, motivation and the brain. And, the brain. and you've really touched on all of those actually. Um, so it isn't rocket science, is it? The really important part is, is, is how we then embed that through methodologies. And of course that's what is difficult, that's what takes time and money um, mm. and lots of training and development. And we do that here. And um, you know, that's, that's in part why our results um, have been improving year on year for the last three years. So it's, uh, you know, it, is, it, it does work. Yeah. Um, and you know, you're, you're actually um, speaking to it you know, every time you do what you're doing. So that's great. Thanks for letting us do this, because what I then do is I like to watch back, like, so it helps me to learn also, so it's like I can hear things you're saying and I'm going to watch it back and it's like, you know, different things to touch on. So I'm going to make sure I'm going to hit them harder yeah. with them stories next time as well. So if that, that's He's still using your opportunities, Coyote. Yeah. Right, so take a look. Right. I still have to learn. 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 But, um, no, yeah, practice what you that. preach. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, that's it. I mean, that, that's in part why I asked you know, how, do you, how are you seeking to develop what you do? And, and, yeah. and, uh, so, this is part of it, I guess. This is, this this is part, is part of speaking to, it. Speaking to staff, speaking to. Yeah, to really hone in. Yeah, so yeah. I congratulate you, you on the success yeah. you've had as well, and thank um, and thank you for uh, coming. You're very lucky to be friends with Leanne. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs>